Some of the questions I get asked about most in this channel are questions about customizing your crosshair and crunker settings in general. So this video is going to serve as a guide that explains all of the crunker settings. The good news is that with the recent updates, many of the client-only features have made their way into the browser-based version of the game. In particular, the custom crosshair. This is really great because the client isn't available for platforms like the Google Chromebook, which is how many people play Crunker. So some of the stuff in the video is going to seem really obvious to veteran players, but for new players I think that it will be really helpful for me to explain everything and give the reasons why I select certain settings. As a disclaimer, a lot of the setting choices in this video are going to come down to personal preference. I'm going to be including a table of contents overlaid on this video so you can skip through the sections if you would like. But before we jump in, a quick subscriber update. The channel has grown a lot organically over the past few weeks, and I love reading all the comments that you guys post and definitely want to give something back to the community. So next video, I will be announcing a giveaway. I'm still working out the logistics, but you're going to have a chance to win a gaming mouse. And when we hit 1,000 subscribers, I plan on doing a stream where subs can play with me, hopefully run a fun like 16-player lobby, and announce the winner of the mouse giveaway. So now let's take a look at the Crunker settings, and we're going to be going over all the basic settings. Um, we'll be covering everything except for the add-ons section, which is only available on the Crunker client. To access settings, click here on the bottom left corner of the screen. So the first thing that we're going to look at is change controls and you can modify your controls here. In the past, you couldn't map some of your mouse buttons, but now you can remap the side mouse buttons. However, I think that Crunker's default controls are actually really good already. And even though I heavily customize my control schemes in games like PUBG and Fortnite, I more or less left the Crunker controls to be the defaults. There is one thing that should be added to the game, um, especially for players playing on trackpad. So one feature that would really help is being able to map a keyboard button to fire the weapon. So going back to the main settings menu, the first option is a server default region. For me that's Silicon Valley. Um, you should just select the region that's closest to you, but usually it's automatically selected as the one that's the best ping. Resolution is a slider. I really like how this is implemented. So it's a resolution scale. With the resolution scale, they can render the game at a certain resolution and scale it back to whatever the native resolution of your display is. So my display is 1920 by 1080, so resolution scale of 1 would mean that the game is being rendered at 1920 by 1080. And I'll give you a quick demonstration of the differences in graphics. So let's go down to a resolution of 0.1. You can see how pixelated it looks because the, the game is being rendered at a resolution that's a fraction of Full HD. And then as you go up, um, 1 is equivalent to Full HD. And then 2, um, the game is being rendered at a really, really high resolution and scaled down. I think like NVIDIA calls this something like um, super sampling, but basically that's what it's doing. Now, I do prefer to play on like lower resolution, but I noticed that, at least for me, the game optimization has been feeling a lot, lot better recently. So I may start to play with a resolution of 1 to 2. Typically, I'm at 0.9. The next setting is particles, which is these environmental weather effects. So if your PC is faster, you can keep it on, and if your PC is slower, you can turn it off. Muzzle flash. So um, in past versions of the game, it definitely gave a hit to performance, but I don't think that's really the case anymore. Again, it depends on your computer. However, I do find the muzzle effect to be a bit distracting, so typically I play with it turned off. You can see here, spraying at the wall. The screen is like kind of flashing over and over again, so if you're sensitive to like light and things like that, definitely turn it off. But for just general, like, you know, competitive advantage, you should probably also turn it off. So I'm gonna turn muzzle flash off. I'm gonna keep particles on. And this is just customization of like how much information that you want um, in your UI. The main thing that um, you should turn on is I like to turn on show deaths. I think it's a pretty helpful to know how you're doing. The next section is an important one, and that's the crosshair section. And the first drop down menu item is the type of crosshair. And we're going to cycle through these and show you what they look like in game. So here's what it looks like with the crosshair turned off. So this forces you to aim with iron sights, or if your weapon has a red dot, then you can aim with that. 
So it's not really, so it's actually not that hard with weapons with the red dot to play with crosshair off. But I also see no reason to do it. So this is what the game looks like with the default setting turned on. And this is good for like new players because you can tell when your gun is not as accurate, it's going to have a higher bloom. That's the random spread um, of the bullets. And the bloom is indicated by those four lines. And as you can see, as I aim down sights, it all kind of comes together until it's pinpoint accurate. So when you click on the custom crosshair setting, it opens up a new submenu and shows you even more options. So let's go through the variety of custom crosshair options. First is the cross, and this is what the cross looks like. The cross is great for people who are really used to games like Counter-Strike. Next, we have the hollow circle. So the hollow circle is a really interesting one. One of the benefits of a hollow circle is that the crosshair itself does not block the target that you're aiming at. So some people like the hollow circle as opposed to a dot. Solid circle is the one that I use. I think this is a really great crosshair all around. You always know exactly where the center of your screen is. Hollow square, not really sure who would use this. Maybe it's good in kind of a blocky style game like Runker, but I really have no experience with it. And lastly, the solid square is a square filled in. So now let's look at some of the other parameters of the crosshair. So you can pick any color, you can even define the custom color. Probably the most common is going to be a red crosshair and a green crosshair. Before I came over to Krunker, I was playing Apex Legends, so I was used to a red dot on the screen. And that's why I play with a red dot. But green is also a really good color. Green is one of the colors that has the most contrast with a variety of surfaces. And except for this new map, there isn't a whole lot of green in Krunker. So I think green is also a really great choice. But you can also make an argument for using a color like um, purple or pink. And the reason is because like red and green, they still appear in games like on health bars, um, things like that. Whereas a color like purple, magenta, etc., it's really not going to appear anywhere in the game. So it will always have contrast with whatever it's on. So the always show button is an interesting one. I think that having this turned off is like great on the trigger man when you're playing with gun model on because the crosshair disappears as the green dot or red dot appear. So I think that's really cool. However, um, let me show you with the detective. When you switch to a class like the detective that just has iron sights, when you're ADS, then you lose that dot. The gun model is blocking a lot of your aim. So if I have gun model turned on with the detective, I like to always show the dot. And with the trigger man or other guns with a red dot, I like to have it um, like not always show. But usually I'm lazy and I don't like to switch it, so I just use always show. And then going back to the crosshair types, we have the layered setting, which combines the custom crosshair with the default crosshair. Not a bad crosshair at all. I just find it to be a little bit cluttered. And then after that, there's an image, so you can actually upload custom crosshairs. So next I'm going to show you how to install a custom crosshair. And the crosshairs I found are from the Corker client discord. So if you're looking for custom crosshairs, I recommend that you go there. And thank you for everybody who created these crosshairs. So all I have to do is enter the URL of the image. And you can see here, now I have my, my cool custom crosshair. So there's like the crosshair, then there's the scope image as well. So I'll show you how to install that. All right, so this scope image is by Kato. And over here, you can enter your scope image URL. And when I scope in, I have my cool custom crosshair. Obviously it looks a little bit weird with that black box around it. So let's go back to the settings and we're going to disable the setting scope borders. And now we have our custom crosshair working properly. This one gives a nice field of view. Now we're going to go back to the gameplay section of the settings. 
So in another video, I talked about how you can fine tune your sensitivity to the hundredth place. You just have to go to the tenth place first. So like 0 0.4, drag that up. And then I can enter the hundredth place after that and even go further. So I recommend fine tuning your sense, field of view. Um, I think 120 is great. I prefer 110 because it's a little bit easier to hit enemies from far away. The next is going to be weapon FOV and it's a good idea to keep this high if you're going to keep your gun model turned on. And if I have my weapon FOV at 60, the gun blocks a large portion of the screen. I increase that to 120. So I can still enjoy using some awesome weapon skins, but my view is not as obstructed when you have high weapon FOV. Personally, I do prefer to play at 110 weapon FOV. Invert Y axis, it just reverses the up and down of your mouse movements. And audio, pretty self-explanatory, but I do tend to keep it a bit lower because I find Krunker to be on the louder side. Now I'm gonna talk about a section called editing and the first option here is show weapon. So if I disable it, the gun model disappears. So I think it's cool that this option exists, but I do see it as a bit of an unfair advantage. In other games, the weapon model blocking your field of view is kind of part of the game balance. And by allowing you to disable the gun model, um, of course, everybody has this option, but it kind of goes in conflict with the idea of having skins in game as well. So personally, might be an unpopular opinion, I'm not really sure, but I think that this mode, this setting should not be allowed. However, if you do play games like Quake um, at the highest competitive level, they, uh, you know, you can see that they have the gun model disabled and it's just part of it. Next, I'm going to be illustrating the weapon bobbing effect. So first let's max out weapon bobbing. And look how the gun model moves up and down. And look, you can see like when my body is turned, like if I'm doing sliding and jumping. Um, so this can be distracting to some players, but for other players, it's really good visual feedback to know when you're crouching, when you're sliding, etc. And it definitely gives you a sense of like movement, which can be nice. So now let's turn weapon bobbing completely off. The gun just stays completely still. So maybe, you know, this might be better for steady aim, but you know, you're not exactly sure like when your player is crouching and you just don't get that feeling of feedback. So that's why I play with weapon bobbing at 0.4. Just a little bit of weapon bobbing, not too distracting. The next setting depth map, it refers to the information on 2D surfaces about distances. Um, I think this one is mainly used for like debugging. And then green screen, again, all the like objects are illuminated in green. Again, it's probably a tool used by developers. So the next one is pretty interesting and it's called ambient shading. So that means there's like a simulated light source and the objects have different degrees of like shade. So darkness versus lightness to give an effect of light. And so if this isn't a big hit to your performance, it is pretty cool to keep it on. It makes the game kind of look a bit more realistic. However, in terms of competitive advantage, sometimes you want everything to look really flat. So if I'm playing try hard mode, I typically will turn it off. Lastly is the mod section. So I don't use mods too often. I haven't really messed around too much with it, but in order for the mods to work, um, you have to hit the load mods button and then you can auto load mods as well. So match end message, I haven't used this yet, but I could say something like, thanks for playing with me, subscribe, whatever, um, as my match end message. So when the match is over, I can broadcast out my advertisement or whatever you want to say. I did say that I wasn't going to talk about the add-on section, but I do want to talk about one feature and that's the unlimited FPS button. Um, it's available on client, and enabling it, first you have to restart the client, so let's do that. So now we have um, the unlimited FPS button enabled. Now, some things like um, jump height are actually impacted by the game's frame rate at the moment, and also sliding. So I can slide for further distances and jump higher. Easily make that jump. 
So it can give you uh, an advantage, but this will be patched and fixed in the future. So personally, I like to play at a very stable 144 FPS, and that's why I typically keep unlimited FPS off. So that's my overview of Crunker settings. Again, if you're a veteran player, a lot of these settings you probably fully understand already. But if you're a newer player or someone who is just messing around with their settings, hopefully there's something here that's useful to you. Settings also do really come down in terms of personal preference. So let's say you just want the game to look really good and you don't care about frame rates as much, or maybe your monitor is capped at 60 FPS, then you don't need to worry about frame rates. Um, of course, your settings are going to look really different than the person who's playing on their Google Chromebook at school. So it really depends and you really just have to find what works best for you. Secondly, you really have to think about whether you're going for the ultimate competitive advantage or you're playing the game for fun or you really want to balance the two, which would be like in my case. So just think about that and that will help you guide your decisions on tweaking the settings. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to my channel.